a bodybuilder at its root is concerned with self-development through self-mastery. Everybody's on steroids. Everybody. Look at the guys in the Olympia stage. And you're hitting a pose. And, and then you're like... <sighs> when it comes to talking about what choice should be made, it's that unenhanced bodybuilding is the way to go. This is time right now for natural bodybuilding to grow, where everybody's seeing that health is the most important thing. I was never going to be a man's physique. Didn't have much of an off-season. I like his physique better. I'm always very energetic. I will have to put me as one of the greatest. Mr. Olympia was won by the back. I want to get your opinion on gurus, you know, there's, there's a lot of talk about gurus and Chad Nichols is part of the conversation, whether they're good or bad for the sport, you know. Some say, you know, they give the wrong advice and people say they actually, they're helpful. How do, how, what do you, what do you say about that and what is your advice to the upcoming bodybuilders that, you know, considering getting one, a coach or a guru? Well, I think you have to pick the, pick the coach that's best for you, you know, don't, don't look at what they've done for someone else. Uh, sit down with the coach, talk with the coach, hear what their mindset is, how they feel about different things, and and um, that that's and, and you choose a, and you decide you choose your coach. As far as gurus, gurus been around for a long time. You know, we remember. I don't know if, if you've ever heard of Dan Duchesne. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was he was a guru. He was a drug guru. He messed me up really bad one, one year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh man, he messed me up so bad one year. And um, Chris Aceto was my first coach, you know. When I turned pro, it was Chris Aceto who was responsible for it, you know. And uh, he messed you up. He gave you like what the, the wrong dosage or something? Damn right! Like he made me take so much. Uh, really, what it is? He just he just had me taking um, something like six or seven uh, cytomel a day, which is a which is a T uh, a T T three thyroid medication, wow. you know. And it, I mean. I just kept losing muscle, feeling like, you know. How did he do that? He, he wasn't aware of what he was doing? Well, he, he just thinks, you know, okay, you're this side, blah, blah, blah. You should be able to take, you know, a six to 10 cytomel a day, bliss much clenbuterol mixed with it. And um, I got introduced to Chris Aceto and Chris was like, we're not doing any of that. We're, you're not taking any thyroid medication. You're not taking any clenbuterol, you know. And he brought me up to his house he was in his condo and he was living in Maine and just took me out from doing all that garbage and just, just straight up dieting, you know, just straight up dieting. He made, he made all my meals. He, he took me into the gym. Chris was, Chris is a, Chris is an amazing, amazing trainer. And I don't want to call him a guru. I, I just think he's a great trainer. He knows what he's, he knows what he's talking about. You know, he tries to put logics and facts behind what he, what he, what he, what he, what he, what he has, his uh, his athletes do, um, Chad. Chad again. Chad. Chad helped me to get in. You know, some of the best condition in my life. You know, um, so Chad is a Chad is another incredible, incredible trainer, um, and we were we were we were friends. I I don't know about today, if 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 he's still doing this stuff or not. You know. But there, you do have to be afraid of a lot of people out there who call themselves a guru, who did one, never even competed or did one show, and to just to make money, you know, you, they pump someone full of drugs, don't know the repercussion of it, and you know, you could kill, you could take someone's life. You know, I'm one of those people who can said, oh yeah, you know, it's, it, it has, it has messed me up on more than one occasion, listening to the wrong people. And uh, I think when you have a coach, you should, it should be sink or swim with that coach. Don't listen to, don't have a coach and then at the same time you're listening to two, three other people because when you make, when you make a mistake, you'll never know who, who, who had the right answer, who had, who had the wrong answer. I stuck with Chad Nichols for, for like 10, for 10 years. I stuck with Charles Glass for 10 years. You know, someone says right off the bat, who would you recommend? I'd recommend those guys all day long. You know, Charles, man, Charles just, a, you know, he's like the second coming of Christ when it comes to training. This man knows, he knows just about every biomechanics about the body, what, what's going to work for you. And people think that everything you do, you have to go in the gym and lift 500 pounds. No, it doesn't because there's some muscles, there's just 
very small twitched muscle and Charles will, Charles will come up with exercise that it may be all you're pulling is 100 pounds, but that's all it, it needs to build that muscle. We're not trying to be power lifters. You're trying to be a bodybuilder. It's about your physique. It's about your, your aesthetic, right? It's not about having a big, huge gut hanging out there, right? Uh, you had an incident, right, when you collapsed on stage. Um, I forgot where it was, but that, is that true? Would you ever it, was at, it, was at, it was at the Arnold Classic. Arnold Classic. And, that, and that, what happened there? Was it dehydration from what I read, or is it something happening where it got a wrong advice? It's dehydration. It's, uh, it's having um, it's, uh, too much calcium and no magnesium, you know, and at the same time listening to some just just someone who I shouldn't have listened to. You know, so that's an incident where, where like I said, I'm, I can speak from experience and I'm not going to, I won't throw anyone under the bus and call anyone's name. Because at the end of the day, I was a grown ass man. <laughs> and someone tell you to do something, you don't have to do it. But, you know, as a bodybuilder, as an athlete, you want to win by any means necessary. And God damn, I was looking crazy that day. <laughs> I, mean, I think that was good. I think that would have been an easy win. For me, it was up against Kevin LeBron and Vince Taylor. Um, <laughs> But it wasn't meant to be, and you know, I came very close to losing my life. Uh, at that That's crazy. Well, it was that bad. It was that bad. No one knew. I never talk about it, right? But it, it, it uh, my heart stopped beating for a minute, for wow. one for a minute. Yeah, I was so dry they couldn't even put the IV needle into my to my veins. That's you know? crazy. Yeah, it was. It was. I was. <laughs> my body literally cramped up from my from my whole, you know from all from from my legs. My, my, my feet, my calves, my quads, my stomach, my lower back. So it was going all the way up to the heart, right? Mm. Uh, I, mean, I didn't know it was that serious. Well, so what happened? Uh, how did they re recover you? Well, man, like I said, I was, when I, when I, I, I woke up in the hospital and as I was up, you know, the doctors told me that, you know, we had to revive you. You were, you know, you, you were, you were legally dead for one minute. That's crazy. Yeah, legally, legally dead for one minute, you know. Um, I don't think I was ever the same after that, <clears throat> you know. Did you see something when you were when you were out? Did you see some kind of? Yeah, I think <clears throat> I talk about this all the time. Where I tell people I had a, I had a dog, a little, and her name was Annabelle, <laughs> and um, for that for that, while I was, I didn't even know that I was gone. I just know, I felt I, I was in a. a it was, I was in an open space and it just all looked blue and it looked like I was, it's almost like I was standing on glass and my dog was probably about 30 feet away from me. And I kept calling her name to come to me, you know, but she wouldn't come to me and I wouldn't go to her, you know, I mean, so I, I never, for, I never forget this, you know, it's always been in my head. I, I've told a lot of people about it. I said, you know, the doctor said I was legally dead for one minute. And I said, at that time, what I, what I experienced was just, you know, just, it's, I don't know if it was just like I'm up in the sky, up in the clouds, and it just seemed blue and clear, and uh, all I saw was my dog that had passed away, you know, and I'm, I'm calling her to come to me, but she wouldn't come to me, and, and I wouldn't go to her, um, you know, and then and end up wake, wake back up, and doctors told me what happened. Um, after that, it just, it just, it, you, I, like I said, I just was never the same, you know, um, when I train, when I get ready for the first shows, right. it's always in the back of your mind, right? It's always that fear. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, I don't know how anybody would even go back to the stage after that because, I mean, think about it, right? What if that happens again? Like, how do you yeah. listen to it at that point, you know? Yes. It's like my condition never, became, never came back like it. You know, like when I first started, because of that incident, it's because it is. It is scary, you know. Um, yeah. I never used. I never touched diuretic after that. You know, um, it's just everything else I did was just, if you know, drink a lot, drink a lot of uh, water to to flush my system, right. um, using B12, dandelion, stuff like all natural stuff, you know, mm -hmm. um, but. But is there is there a real way to prevent any of it? Because I mean, bodybuilding, you agree, right? Is a, is a very extreme sport. It's professional it's bodybuilding. Extreme, yeah. It's not it's like it's like car racing, right? I mean, so if it is such, then this comes with a territory, right? Anything can happen at any moment. It's almost like you know, 
it, it can just happen, right? Well, well it's like, <clears throat> I mean, what happened to me, what happened to me, you know, you see it happen in car racing, right? Uh, I mean, come on, you, you, you drive, you drive a car over 200 miles an hour with any other car uh, on this little track. I mean, one wrong move and you may not go home and we see it happen or guys get paralyzed, you know, football, you know, I mean, you, you, you have a guy that's, you know, 200 pounds, you know, get hit by a guy that's 300 pounds, you know, and he's paralyzed for life, you know, sports, sports is extremely, it's very extreme. And uh, as we're young guys, uh, as young guys, you know, we, we, we feel, we feel uh, like, you know, like Superman, like we can't get hurt. You know, we, we don't think about the repercussion. We just think about, we want to win. We just want to win. We want to win by any means necessary. We don't, we never think about, you know, what could happen. We just think about what we want to happen, which is we want to win. Have you ever used an oxygen tank backstage um, at the show? No, no. I think, I think once there was I mean, one. Some guys use it because there's not enough oxygen, right? So. Yeah, and not, and um, you know, I am asthmatic, so it's like some people said, oh, you know, delete this, delete that, but I'm like, well, my breathe, I don't breathe in as much oxygen as a normal person, right? <laughs> I mean, um, so it was harder for me to breathe than the average guy. So maybe if they did have oxygen tanks, it would have been great for me back then, you know, to get more oxygen into my lungs. Um, so there, there was, there was some drawbacks, you know, to, for, you know, it, but you don't talk about it because you don't want to make up any excuses, you know, it, it's kind of like, no, if this guy wins, he wins because he was the best guy in that day. And if, you know, if I didn't, then so be it. I just got to go back to the gym and, and work that much harder. It is what it is.